Hey guys, it's Ando. So a few weeks back, we figured out how to make incredibly crispy and delicious potato chips here on the channel. And honestly, all they needed was just a little sprinkle of salt because that's how good homemade potato chips are. But you guys made it abundantly clear that you really want to know how to make seasoned potato chips. So that is exactly what we're gonna attempt today with as many as seven different flavors that you can, of course, not just use for potato chips, but pretty much anything else. And um, spoiler alert, some of them worked out really well and some of them, maybe not so much. But first things first, when you look for unusual potato chips flavors online, you will not be disappointed. From blueberry to cinnamon to kebab, I feel like everything that can be done has been done before. But to be completely honest with you, I feel like most of these flavors are just marketing gimmicks. I mean, some of them, like maybe Caesar salad, could actually be pretty good, but come on, cappuccino, lemon tea, really? But anyhow, if you're trying to make a potato chip seasoning at home, there's pretty much just one rule you need to follow. So if you paid attention in my last video, which I really hope you check out because it tells you all about the science and history of potato chips, you know it's pretty much just a thinly sliced potato that has been cooked, but most importantly, fully dehydrated. A potato chip can only truly be crispy if there is zero water or moisture in it. And that means if you want to season your potato chip, you have to turn your flavor of choice into a dry powder. And depending on what flavor exactly that is, things can get pretty difficult. But don't worry, we're gonna start easy. So your safest bet for sure is to simply be working with things that are already dry as they come. And that, of course, opens up the amazing world of dried spices. You're also gonna need like a little food processor or a spice grinder like this one. I think I paid like 15 bucks and that is a great investment for the kitchen. And then just go crazy. There are no limits, but here's an idea. Into your spice grinder, add some paprika powder, smoked paprika powder, a bit of cumin, maybe two berries of allspice, a touch of coriander seeds, and then of course, salt, pepper, and you guessed it, a little sprinkle of MSG. Grind everything together into a fine powder. I actually like giving the grinder a few shakes to help it along. And then this is a delicious spice mix that mixed together with a few freshly cooked potato chips really does taste surprisingly amazing. Here's one. This is the easiest method, but it's also like a foolproof method. Nothing can go wrong here. I really love the zesty note you get from the coriander. Then smoked paprika, honestly, I think it's the secret weapon of every kitchen. It just makes everything taste good, in my opinion. Okay, but obviously we've barely scratched the surface of all the things you can do to potato chips. So let's take this up a notch, shall we? Obviously not everything that is dry is something we would call a spice, Per se. In fact, there are quite a lot of things out there that naturally contain quite a lot of moisture, but are also available to buy as dried ingredients. A great example would actually be mushrooms. Not only do they work really well when dehydrated, they're also full of umami goodness. Another example would be dried seafood, such as shrimps or fish, which you can normally find at Asian grocery stores. But also quite a lot of you guys mentioned chili lime seasoned potato chips, which sounds amazing. So here's what I did. First, I grabbed an untreated lime and sliced it into thin pieces. I then put those in a dehydrator, which I used quite a lot for this video, but since most of you probably don't have one at home, your oven set to like 60 Celsius, super low, will also do the trick for most things. Or you just go out and buy dried lime or lemon or whatever citrus your heart desires. Anyway, the next day my lime slices dehydrated nicely, but there was an issue, which is that the white pith of citrus fruits tends to taste very bitter and that would not work so well in our seasoning. So I also dehydrated some lime zest that I shaved off with a regular peeler and that works a lot better. But to preserve some of the lime's sour flavor, which is of course not in the zest, I also cut off the rinds, which are bitter, right, from a few slices and then added the dehydrated lime flesh as well. Now all this needed was a spoonful of Korean chili flakes, a little pepper, salt and MSG. So let me get a fresh taste of this. Mmm. The lime really does come through, but you definitely need both. You need the zest and you need some of the sour flesh. It's super important. This is tasty. <laughs> 
So far, everything has worked great, hasn't it? I also like the spice level, which is really good on these, just as I like it. But I think a little bit of extra smoked paprika would have made this even better. Smoked paprika is like the MSG of the spice world. Okay, so we're off to a pretty strong start, I would say, but you know what? I do appreciate those spice blends and that kind of stuff, but nothing will ever beat like a creamy, cheesy type of chip. That's the kind of man I am. I love cheese, what can I say? So let's try that. And look, before I get tons of comments, I understand that the easiest way to do this would simply be to buy cheese powder. In some regions, like in North America, where else, of course, <laughs> uh, cheese powder is quite widely available. But honestly, where's the fun in that if we can make it ourselves? At least I think we can make it ourselves. But can we? So what I did is I popped a slice of cheddar cheese into a cold nonstick pan, then turned that to low heat and slowly let the fat render out. Don't touch the cheese, just give it a bit of time. This is just like making crackers from cheese if you've ever seen that. Pour off the excess fat, then carefully get your cheese out and pat it dry with a paper towel. Once the cheese has cooled, it's gonna turn hard and it should work just fine in a blender. But it's also lost a little bit of flavor. So to bring that back, I'm adding some nutritional yeast, which has naturally cheesy flavors. Then for the onion part, I'm just using onion powder. And then, of course, we add extra salt and a touch of MSG. And this is it, my DIY cheese and onion potato chip. It really is quite different from a store-bought one, but not necessarily bad. I mean, it's cheesy, it's oniony, it does hit the spot. And I'm really happy I added the nutritional yeast because that really helped kind of amplify that cheesiness. But I'm not gonna lie, there's one big downside to this. I don't know how well you can see it, but the cheese powder that we made is not super fine. It's like a little bit gritty, a little bit like cheesy sand, which is the best kind of sand, but maybe not in my mouth. So yeah, in terms of flavor, I think we got close, but I kind of think that a less than perfect texture is acceptable in this case. Don't forget that what we're doing here is we're trying to imitate a snack that has kind of been born in a highly industrialized setting. So I think we have a little bit of wiggle room. So yes, guys, we have turned cheese into a powder, but what if we tried that with another favorite, bacon? The process is really similar. Add your bacon strips to a pan, slowly render out the fat, and then pat off the excess with a paper towel. Once cooled, add your crispy bacon to the grinder. I'm enhancing the smokiness with smoked paprika and also adding a little pinch of garlic powder for, you know, a little bit of a bite. Also, bacon goes really well with sweet flavors, so I added a bit of brown sugar and finished it off with a pinch of salt. Here it is. <laughs> so, surprisingly, this works quite well. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you guys have tried bacon-flavored snacks before, and they have this, like, typical fake bacon flavor. Faken? Um, but this actually tastes a lot more like real bacon. So, that's a plus. It's bacon. I like the garlic in here, but I think I should have added a bit more, because it barely comes through, but it's good. It's bacon. We do have the same problem with texture here, though. It's just a little bit gritty. It's not a fine dusting. It's more like bacon gravel. But overall, I think it still works. Ever since I was a kid, one of my favorite potato chip flavors was sour cream and onion. There's just something about that creamy, milky flavor that works incredibly well with potatoes. But honestly, how would you even make a sour cream powder? Well, the answer is you don't. Instead, you kind of fake it a little bit. Sour cream has a pretty high fat content, which can be tricky if you want to dehydrate it, but buttermilk or yogurt hits many of the same flavor notes with a much lower fat ratio. So I did the unthinkable and just put buttermilk on baking paper and into my dehydrator, which somewhat surprisingly actually worked. I crumbled the buttermilk cracker into the grinder, added onion and garlic powder, as well as dried dill, parsley and chives, then finished everything with salt and pepper, grind, 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 and well, that did not taste like sour cream. 
some of the flavor notes I wanted were already there and the herbs definitely worked, but I would have needed so much more buttermilk powder to get where I wanted to be. So what I did is I added milk powder to get that milky creamy note and a pinch of citric acid powder for extra acidity. We'll get back to that ingredient in a second. Here we go. Let's see if I did a good job recreating my childhood favorite. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is pretty good. I think the, the kind of fake sour cream flavor we created is actually pretty good. And the citric acid helped a lot. But most of all, I think the dill. The dried dill is what really sells this to me. I think like dill immediately hits that like ranch dressing type of flavor note in my head. So I think that's the secret ingredient here. It works. Also texturally, this is a pretty fine powder. We don't really have that grittiness problem that we had with the cheese and the bacon. In fact, I don't see much wrong with this. I mean, the recipe could definitely use some balancing, but I think we're onto something here. So I know I just mentioned this, but the citric acid powder is what really saved my ass here because I would not have gotten the same level of acidity from just buttermilk powder, I think. Which actually brings me to what is definitely the biggest challenge in this video. So the flavor you guys asked for the most by far is salt and vinegar. You love that stuff and so do I. There's only one problem. At the most basic level, no pun intended, most vinegars are just the solution of acetic acid in water. There might be trace amounts of other things in there like flavorings, but for the most part, that's really it. I'm sure you remember the buttermilk, right? When we put that into the dehydrator, the water evaporated and we were left with the solids like proteins and stuff like that, that we could then put in a grinder and turn into a powder. But most vinegars don't contain these solids. The acid itself really is fully dissolved in the vinegar. So if you try to reduce it or evaporate the water, you will eventually just be left with nothing, <laughs> like nothing. Of course, there are many types of vinegar out there. One of my favorites being balsamic vinegar, which actually is not a distilled vinegar and has a way more complex production process, which uh, results in it containing quite a lot of sugar. And that for complicated reasons that I don't fully understand yet is actually a big, big pain in the ass if you try to dehydrate things. It pretty much makes it impossible. If you're wondering how industrial vinegar powders are produced, well, they use a process called spray drying, which I believe is related to freeze drying. And to make it short, it's an extremely sophisticated version of dehydration, which you need specialized equipment for. So it's a pass for this video. I also thought of reducing balsamic vinegar, by the way, which first turns into like a syrup, balsamic reduction, you might have had it before. And then after that, it's going to turn into caramel. Um, but by the time we're there, most of the acid has actually already evaporated. So at the best, you will be left with balsamic candy, which doesn't really taste sour at all. So I don't know. What I ended up doing is I tried the only other method I could think of, which is binding the vinegar to other stuff. First, I mixed apple cider vinegar with a bit of potato starch and let that gelatinize. I spread the gel on some baking paper and then popped that into my dehydrator. I also did the same with balsamic vinegar. As a plan B, I took some mashed potato powder from the store, which is actually pretty much just dehydrated cooked potatoes, and then let that soak up some vinegar, which I also then transferred into my dehydrator. So both these methods are a little bit weird and they also worked uh, just a little bit. The apple cider vinegar mix is dehydrated really well and turned out super crisp. I added both the starchy and the potato powdered mixes into the grinder, added salt and also enhanced the flavors with some citric acid and apple chips. And now here I am trying apple cider vinegar chips, which Sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> no, not so much. I get some acidity, but I think mostly from the citric acid. I get a little bit of an apple taste, which I'm not sure if I like with chips. I mean, it kind of worked, but I'm not going to lie. I would not buy this. So that was something, but it was not exactly what I was going for. And what do you think? Did I have more luck with the balsamic vinegar chips? So I took the balsamic soaked and dehydrated potato flakes, turned those into a powder, added a little bit of onion powder and a bit of salt and MSG. 
I really wanted to use the starchy mix too, but it was simply way too sticky and flexible to work with. This is what sugar does, guys. If somebody understands the chemistry of why sugar makes things gooey rather than crisp, please explain. But in the meantime, I'm gonna try balsamic vinegar chips. I don't know. This is hardly any better than the apple cider vinegar. I mean, it's all right, but I don't get a ton of balsamic taste from this. Definitely not. This is a mystery to me. I tried a ton of different things. This was my best shot. And I don't think I'm super close yet. But again, I can eat it. But don't worry, guys. I would not leave you hanging like that. You asked for a solution to making salt and vinegar chips at home. It wouldn't quite work for balsamic vinegar, but I have one. And we've kind of been using it all along. So the secret is to simply use citric acid powder, which is very cheap and available all over the world. And then you mix that with salt. I also added a little bit of tarragon to help me emulate the flavor of fancy tarragon vinegar, one of my favorites. And then I grind that up and there you have it. Salt and tarragon vinegar seasoning. This is it, super crispy chip, very fine powder. No problems with that at all. Oh, super strong. Might have over seasoned a little bit, but even though it's so strong, it hits me in all the right ways. It's like, mm. it's salty, it's sour, and I definitely get a very strong hint of the tarragon, which I love. So yeah, don't waste your time making weird vinegar gels and dehydrating them. <laughs> I did it so you don't have to. Just find the right ratio of citric acid and salt for you and then add any flavorings to make it fancy if you like. For example, herbs or whatever. I mean, this just works. This is, this is almost exactly like a salt and vinegar chip. And it really is very enjoyable. But I feel like this amount of citric acid is gonna hurt the roof of my mouth. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it was a little bit experimental, but that is the process and I shared it with you. I definitely learned a lot. Hopefully so did you. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video.